let that sink in for a bit. Let that sink in for a bit from old Wyatt there. Uh, at Austere Wyatt 1, I guess. One dot something. Who the fuck knows? But let that sink in for a bit. They'll keep setting fires until you submit to their climate change agenda. They'll keep instigating shootings until you submit to gun control. And they'll keep faking pandemics until you submit to medical slavery. And they'll keep crashing economies until you submit to their permanent austerity measures. And they'll keep fucking up elections until you submit to doing away with them. They have an agenda. They have a plan. One that will not succeed on its own merits. That's what governing via crisis does. Never let a good crisis go to waste. And never fail to manufacture one when you need it. <laughs> I would say I follow Wyatt here. You should follow Wyatt. But I'm no longer on Twitter. <laughs> but that's a very good fucking lesson. I don't jump into these things when they happen immediately. Uh, I always give it a couple days, sit back and look at it and figure it out and let the stupid shit fucking shake its way loose. Like ray beams from space or Chinese fucking lasers. Um, I always, always do that. And the situation that happened with Maui uh, is no exception. I'm going to talk a little bit about that this morning and what I've uh, come to understand from it. And it is just, it is, it is a remarkable example of what happens when you let the free markets run wild. This is not being done as a, as a government land grab. This is being done using elements within the government to grab land and property from people, families that have been there for generations, in some cases longer than Hawaii has been a state. For the purpose of handing it over to big developers so they can make more fucking money. It is... And listen, I don't say that lightly. But you can't look at all these fucking failures and all of the fucking steps they took that aided and abetted the fucking fires and the destruction of the fires and say, you know what? <clears throat> Mistakes happen. Accidents happen. The head of the Maui fucking emergency management agency has resigned. That'll be the first story we talk about. He had to resign because people wanted to know why he hadn't, didn't sound the alarm, didn't sound the siren. His response was, after not attending a press conference for five days, he finally shows up. He's got a nice little thing all written for him with some tall dude standing behind him. I don't know who that dude is. I guess the enforcer. Maybe he's Maui's governor or, 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 or some kind of, I don't know who he is. Um, but uh, he comes in there with this thing written out, all ready to go for any, any, any question he's going to be asked. And of course, he was asked, why didn't you sound the fucking alarm? And he gave this long, bullshit, drawn-out answer. And the guy said, Spit, why didn't you do it this time? What's the And the guy, the big, tall guy from behind the, 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 the management, emergency management official, uh, steps forward and goes, you're going to let him answer the question. It's like, God damn, it's thuggery. It's fucking thuggery. People think that um, places like, uh, you know, famous places like the Daly family in, 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 in Chicago and 
and others. <clears throat> They're just these little fucking tyrannies uh, uh, in government set up a, across the fucking country. And there's this more than you can count, I'm sure. Uh, Hawaii is one of them. That's why whenever people talk about Tulsi Gabbard, and I look at her daddy, and I look at the time she served in the military, clearly doing it just so she can use it to pad her resume to run for office. Um, and her father's uh, history, which is extensive in politics in, in, in Hawaii. Um, you know, just it, it reminds me um, of just how fucking corrupt much of the government is in, in Hawaii across the board. Um, I mean, just fucking corrupt. Um, and you're welcome to Google that and look it up for yourself. Um, and it makes sense. Chicago is a place of lots of money. Back in the day, they had the fucking mob there. New York's fucking infamous for corruption, obviously. Uh, a lot of places down here in Florida, certainly Miami, certainly Tampa. Um, because you have, you have the juxtaposition of uh, organized crime and you have resort money, tourism. In the case of Chicago and New York, you have the uh, stock exchanges, big business. And celebrities um, and wealthy people. You get all that fucking mixed into the fucking, thrown into the mix, uh, your government's going to be, especially nowadays, when there's no regulation, it's all free, glorious free markets, <laughs> it's going to be fucking corrupt. And that's just all you can say about it. And this is a prime example of what's happening. This is, I, 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 I wanted to say, <clears throat> at first, let's let's just talk about this. I wanted to say at first that shit like this happens from time to time and uh, doesn't necessarily mean that there had to be fucking people uh, instigating it and then accelerating it. Um, but at this point, looking at all the different quote-unquote mistakes or happenstances that occur. And we'll talk about some of them in a minute. And you can't come away from this without knowing this, is, this was done to these people. They wanted these people in these little houses that value-wise, you know, with, with, with the skyrocketing cost of fucking housing these days, especially in places like Hawaii, were still million-dollar homes. I probably got more square footage in mine, but mine's not on fucking in, in paradise. <laughs> and it's not in paradise on a, pl on a plot of land that developers and golf course fucking uh, corporations and celebrities uh, want uh, for their own. <laughs> There's talk out there now that the insurance companies that some of these, most of these places, uh, these people had... Uh, they're going to go belly up. They're going to, they've, they've probably already, they did that down here in Florida a couple times. That year we had three fucking hurricanes hit Tampa. Uh, insurance companies just folded. And they weren't j just the local insurance companies that were down here, uh, just in the, in the, in the Florida and Gulf Coast. They were some big ones. They folded. They said, fuck it, we're not paying Again, when everything's for the corporation, by the corporation, of the corporation, they can get away with this. And they can think about it. And even if they get caught trying to get across a border with suitcases full of cash, and I know it seems like a fucking cliche, but that's, in many instances, that's what's happening. Uh, they can find a way out of it. Because they always got more cash and more access to cash to bribe more officials with. That's happening in, in Hawaii now. And as that happens, you're going to have, um, you're going to have a number of people being forced off their land because they're not going to be able to afford to rebuild. They're already talking about the fact that the rebuilding costs in fucking uh, Maui or Maui 
specifically Maui. There are other. There's one other place. One other uh, island, the Big Island, had some had some forest fires as well. Forest fires. But they're saying specifically Maui is going to be super expensive to rebuild. So what are you going to do? Put tents, put, put tents up, and keep your family in a tent, or uh, are you going to fucking answer the phone? when that developer fucking calls or when BlackRock calls and they offer you pennies on the dollar for your fucking burned up fucking property. <laughs> you cannot help after listening to the long list of things that had to happen in perfect synchronicity in order to manifest these wildfires, quote unquote, in such a way that that part of Hawaii, that west coast, western coast of uh, Maui, uh, that had all those pesky little businesses and people's homes and communities and indigenous people and uh, that'll all be gone and they're gonna fucking buy it up and I don't even think that it's there's no shame in what they've done now I, I listen as far as I know this is basically and you can correct me if I'm wrong but this is basically what happened about 10 hours prior to the initial outbreak of the fires, uh, power goes out in a large swath of that little town and West Maui. And power goes out and uh, so too does the internet. Now, here's part of the theory behind that some say they're going to sue the fucking electric company because the electric company is state owned or owned by the community and they want to they want to sue it out of business so then big fucking power can come in big electric can come in and take it over uh, and have a perfectly working fucking system all they got to do is move into the offices and call it theirs and jack up the fucking prices and they can buy that for pennies on the dollar too. Because they're going to get sued out of business. They're claiming that because of the power, because of the power outage, that's what caused the fire. <laughs> but this is what happens. The power goes out. Internet goes out. When that happens, um, most of the school systems, uh, in the, or the school system in the area, they decide to send the kids back home to houses that have no power and no internet and in some cases no adults because they're work. So they send the kids back home right in the line of fire, literally in the line of fire of the fire. At this point the fire is moving down the hill. Was the fire set? Were the lines taken out because they wanted to use the lines as, a, as, as the, uh, uh, as the uh, supposed cause of the fire to cover their tracks and B, uh, make it so that people couldn't communicate with each other? There was no alarm system sounded. Once the fires were seen coming down, out, coming down off the fucking mountains and the, and the forest and into the fucking, there was no alarms given. Now, the justification that dude gave was that he didn't want people to come out of their house and hear the alarm and go, oh, it must be a tsunami, and turn westward or eastward and run right up into the fucking fire. Because that's what they would do. Because that's what the alarm system is for. Turns out the alarm system's for a number of things. One is tsunamis. 
Two, are man-made things like, I don't know, another Pearl Harbor. Three, out of control wildfires. It's built into the fucking system that it can be used to alert the people of the community for a pending wildfire. He also assumes that people will go, oh my goodness, rather than turning to the water, which looks fine and there's no fucking tidal wave, they will instead turn to the fucking hills uh, where they can see fire up on the hill and run right into the fucking fire. He quit. He resigned. Here, let me show you. Maui's emergency management chief resigns, citing health reasons, a day after he defended the sirens' silence during the wildfires. I also want to tell you, that's this guy. In case you see him in the streets, you can uh, shoot him a mean look. There's the tall guy behind him. You gonna let him talk? You gonna let him answer the questions? <laughs> he literally did that. If you see him, you can shoot him a mean look. I wouldn't recommend anything else. Also, just for the fun of it, just so you know, he wasn't there. There was a FEMA conference. These conferences are funny things. Um, if you're an NGO or if you're a small business owner, you got to go to these conferences twice a year. It's a fucking taxpayer-funded mini vacation uh, for people, quote, in the industry. They get together, they have a few seminars, they talk, they laugh, they joke, they tell each other stories, they catch up from the last seminar, from the last conference they had with their friends, and they drink, and they party, and they put it all on the fucking taxpayer dime. That's what he was on Oahu uh, when this thing kicked off. He didn't return until a day after it was all over. So he wasn't even on the island when it happened. Um, tr some people try to use that as an excuse. Oh, he wasn't even on the island. And he's the only one in the fucking office who knows how to fucking work the goddamn red button that says sound the alarm. Really? That excuse not to sound the alarm because he says people would think it was a tsunami and they'd run right into the fire um, is idiotic because again part of the stated reason for the fucking system is in the event of wildfires <laughs> keep in mind that um, at the end of the day the person in charge of the police department that will be conducting the arson investigations is a guy who was site commander during the Las Vegas shooting in 2017, where supposedly one dude, Stephen Paddock, busted out two windows. And this is the story. This explains why there were multiple different guns firing at the same time. He broke out two different windows from different locations, too, mind you, um, according to all the witnesses, including police officers. He broke out two different windows in two different suites that were connected by a door, and he sat out there with he sat there with two rifles, one in each hand, going. <coughs> That's the story. The police chief who's in charge of investigating possible arson, um, he was a guy, he was the incident commander at the time when that took place and probably contributed some to the investigation. I mentioned before in the previous video, briefly touching on this subject, uh, Metro Police. I was, I, I, I can't say I was flabbergasted or, or really shocked um, 
when I saw the level, when I was doing research on that and Metro Police in fucking Vegas, just how corrupt. But again, it falls into the same category as the other cities I mentioned. Just how fucking corrupt the police department, the Metro Police Department were, or are in Vegas. Just unbelievably corrupt. And for all the same reasons. Um, he's going to be the guy in charge of determining if there was arson or not. <laughs> People have wondered about, he's been there, I think, 400 days as chief of police. People wonder if he was put in place there for that specific qualification. Um, maybe at some point in time he'll be forced to resign as well. They don't care. They get forced to resign and they are paid a stipend. They're paid uh, bonuses that nobody ever hears about, nobody ever talks about. Uh, they will live quite well, quite well when it's all said and done. I don't know about that. It, it's possible he was put there for that reason for uh, 400 days ago. It's also possible that somebody recognized the fact that that's who he was. Once he was there and got a hold of some information out of fucking Las Vegas shooting and said, listen, you're going to do this for us. Otherwise, this information is going to come out. Um, should also point out that the Metro Police were in the hotel hours before the shooting took place. And they still couldn't get to Paddock's room until he was finished with his little shooting, or until the shooting was over. Paddock was long since dead, uh, but for long before that, he was dead. Um, but you have that situation. Um, so that's part of the story as well. Let's continue. So you had the children sent back, and the sirens didn't s s start, and they had a justification for that, and then uh, there was no fucking fire. There's no water. Firefighters were actually trying to put out fires. Firefighters were trying to put out fires. People had their fucking garden hoses fight, and all of a sudden the water shuts off. They shut off the fucking water. This picture, this video has gone viral because they still have a problem with the fucking water. And these people are using bottled water to try to put out the embers, the smoldering embers. So the fucking forest fire doesn't restart. Because they still haven't got fucking access to water. People wanted to know on the 10th why cell service was down in Maui. There was no cell service. There was no internet. There was no fucking electricity. There was no fucking water. There was no siren. Kids had been sent home. This is a... This is... Every single fucking thing that could possibly go wrong in order to make this as bad as humanly possible and clear out enough fucking space for these developers happened. And now we have the guy who was in charge resigning. And I'm 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 pretty sure the police chief's going to be on his way out too. They follow him out of the fucking. Uh, they follow him out of the fucking conferences. But no, they they have conferences like the one that guy was at. The one he was at before they fired him. The one he was at yesterday. He came. He took a couple of days off before he wasn't going to be saying anything. 
And then he came out and had just the right thing to say. I guess that big guy was standing there in a room with him saying, this is what you're going to say. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's hard to imagine that they would go this to this length, this depravity to literally burn fucking neighborhoods where there are children in fucking houses and they have no means by which to fucking ask for help or call for help. It's hard to imagine that we live in a country, a nation, where people will do this to other fucking people for fucking money. But we do. And we know we do. And I, 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 listen, go back to Vegas. You had multiple shooters set up in multiple locations, firing into a crowd of fucking peaceful people, just hanging out, having a good time, having a fucking good evening, because they had an agenda. And then, of course, the cover-up that came from that. We've seen the same shit happening now. They're covering the same. They're covering the shit up now, and the mainstream media is not talking about it nearly enough. Not talking about it nearly enough. And let's not forget, it's not just the developers. Maui has become this fucking place. Lady Gaga lives there. Zuckerberg lives there. Who else lives there? Uh, 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 I mean, it's it's uh, all of these fucking celebrities are buying these spots on Maui. I mean, this is the face of neocolonialism. Said Kapua Sproth, the law professor from the University of Hawaii, to The Guardian in 2017. Even though a forced sale might not physically displace people, it's the last nail in the coffin of us separating us from the, of separating us from the island. And it is. I mean, these people... Oprah's there, Bezos is there. I know fucking... Or is... Or is uh, uh, Obama, I think, is on the, on the, on the, on on Oahu. Um, all these fucking celebrities are there, and all these fucking resorts, and all these beautiful golf courses, and of course the common folk. And if you look at the fucking devastation from the fires, none of the goddamn billionaires, none of the goddamn celebrities lost their fucking homes. It was just the common folk. With all those fucking coincidences that just happen to line up perfectly so that they will be separated from their fucking property. And unless they're a servant, shipped off the fucking island. Uh, I, I don't enjoy talking about situations like this. <laughs> I mean, you look at what, we, what they did in Indonesia with the fucking tsunami. And that was fucking awful. Oh, I'm not done yet. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, th then they started, uh, there were, there's one road going into this town and they were stopping people from coming in, blocking people from getting to their homes to see if they, what, what possessions they had left or even taking bottles of water and putting out fucking embers. Uh, they were blocking people from coming in. They were blocking reporters. They're still blocking reporters from covering what happened. There's still there's a there's a there's a there's a there's a cutoff. They're not they're not allowing reporters to come in and report on it. And I guarantee you, uh, they're shadow banning people on like places like Facebook and Twitter. Uh, who live there? Who are doing their own little reporting with their video, with their with their cell phones? 
I'm sure they're being very careful about what they're letting out, the information they're letting out. Um, it's it's remarkable. It's absolutely remarkable. <laughs> I was I saw the uh, they were also because they were shutting down the road, they were stopping aid from coming in because there's only one road in and one road, same road road in and out, and they were shutting that shit down. They were stopping aid from coming in, so. Communities in neighboring fucking islands were loading fucking shit up on any kind of boat they had. Any kind of boat they had. And they were, they were taking it in via boat. They hadn't, they hadn't stopped that yet as of yesterday. I don't know if they did. This is clearly a fucking land grab. Because it's valuable fucking real estate. Because the people, the rich people on that fucking island... <laughs> they wanted to be just their own little fucking super rich paradise. Well, only the super rich and the celebrities. Morgan Freeman's on that fucking island. Woody Harrelson's on that fucking island. <laughs> well, only the super rich. It's a little super. It's a super rich plaything. And if they can get rid of these these commoners, they can put something interesting for them to play with. A, a new resort or, or a hotel for the super, super duper rich. So places for their guests and, and family members who are coming to stay, coming by to visit them, can stay at the new resort. Who the fuck knows? It's just sickening. They just wanted the fucking common folks off the goddamn island, so they literally burned them off. And because we've allowed our government, state, local, tribal in some cases, and federal, to be usurped, to be bought off, this corporate and, and elitist coup to take place, and we've done nothing about it, there's, there's, no, there's, there's no recourse for them. There's no alarm in the dark when the fire is coming down the goddamn hill to warn your goddamn kids to get the fuck out of the goddamn building and get to safety. There's none. Because people with money saw something they wanted and they didn't care how they got it. And they had the ability to access people in control of certain things, like the police department, like the fucking Maui Emergency Management Agency, <laughs> like the power department, maybe, and make it happen, like the water department, and make it happen. That's what they did. That town, that community will never be the same. It will never be rebuilt. The insurance companies will just go belly up because the last thing the developers want are the insurance companies paying out all this money to these people in these homes so they can rebuild them. So they will get their friends in government to turn a blind eye to the insurance companies folding, packing up the fucking kids, putting all the money in the goddamn suitcases and heading off to Costa Rica or fucking Latvia or wherever the fuck they're from. And it's depressing. And it's sad. This is this is what it's like going back to the 1850s. It just is. The great industrial revolution, the days of the golden age, the days of the robber barons, where they because they own the fucking government, they can do whatever the fuck they want. My heart goes out to the people there. Um, keep this in mind. Well, I'll show it to you one more time if I can pull it up. Because I took it down because I knew since Windows owns my fucking computer, they would tell me I have to commit all my images to the glorious cloud so they own them. They'll keep setting these files until you submit to their climate change agenda. Well, this is, that's part of it. 
The other part of it is you give them what they want. It's, 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 it's mafia rules. You don't give me what I want, I'll, I'll burn your fucking business out. I'll burn your home out. That's... They'll keep instigating shootings until you submit to gun control. Won't somebody think of their children? Oh my God, we've got to take the guns because all of these mass shootings are now taking place in schools with children. Translation, give us your guns and we'll keep killing your fucking kids. And they'll keep faking pandemics until you submit to medical slavery. This is absolutely where we are. And unfortunately, the people of Maui, some of them, not the rich ones, not the celebrities, some of them paid the ultimate price. Most of them, many of them are now homeless. And they will be screwed by their insurance companies so that these developers and very wealthy people in places like BlackRock will be able to buy up their fucking ancestral land for pennies on the dollar. All because all of the things that were supposed to work to help keep them safe just by coincidence stopped working one day in Hawaii.